everyone, whether you realize it or not, has an opinion. <laughs> and most Americans love to share their opinion, which isn't a bad thing. And it could be a good thing, or it could be a bad thing, or it could be a opinionated thing. But the thing that most people don't realize is a lot of what you see either on the news, or in church, or in politics, or in a lot of venues that you take for granted as being accurate, really is opinion, or professional opinion, or speculation in some type based upon data. Now data is raw. Raw data we can deal with. But once you take that raw data and begin to add something to it, it becomes, depending upon who's doing it, facts to a certain degree. And facts are dangerous because they can be sometimes manipulated in different ways depending upon how you put facts together. And when you construe facts in a certain way and add error, that's called fallacy rather than factually. Fallacy, factually. So sometimes people, when they have an opinion, it's based on some false presumption. And that's what a fallacy does. It bases itself on a false presumption and tries to draw a conclusion from it. Unfortunately, opinions are a lot like that. Everybody's got one. One of the things that should be done in the Christian church, which when I grew up with my experience underneath Chuck Smith and some other pastors, they would say things like, the commentaries say this, the Bible says this, but this is my opinion, and then they would offer it. Now, I don't have a problem with anyone's opinion. Bill O'Reilly used to use the word opine, which means personal opinion. They're stating a personal opinion. I'm going to opine, and that's what the next statement would be, an opinion of what their perspective was on any given situation, circumstance, or data, or information that they've been given. That's what one of the doctrines we don't have is should be written about, the doctrine of opinion, meaning that Call it dope, doctrine of opinion, dope, D-O-P. <laughs> but, you know, it's dope. No, it's not. <laughs> it's opinion. But the point is this. A lot of times, pastors will go ahead and say things, and then people will say, well, the pastor said. Well, that doesn't mean he's right. It just means that he said it. That's all. A pastor is no different than a person. As a matter of fact, a pastor is a person. He may have taken the time to prepare, hopefully, ahead of time, you know, maybe, the things that he's going to say prayerfully and that he still gives inspiration to the Holy Spirit at the last minute to speak as he chooses. God help us if he doesn't. But the point is, is that at some point in time you have to settle in your mind what is opinion as opposed to what is fact. Now Jesus always spoke the truth. He said, I say unto you. He spoke with authority. He had that authority. He was the Son of God. He was there at the beginning. He was there and will be at the end. So, being the Son of God, he can have that authority and say, I say unto you, you can't. You see, you don't have all the facts. You are a person who deals with the outward things, but God deals with the inward things and the outward things, as well as the past, the present, and the future. He has authority, you do not. His perspective is that and it's relatable according to our time frame and time sequence of events that we're living in, which we call life today. So, really, there should be a doctrine of opinion where you realize and you recognize when a pastor or a Bible scholar or a news person or somebody else is teaching or telling you something that is opine, opinion. Because most of what we get is opinionated one way or the other. It's either left, right, sideways, whatever it is. You know, depending upon the time of day, even sometimes people will distort facts in some way and not present them in an accurate way so people could evaluate the information and decide for themselves. Now, there were those that were the Bereans who, you know, were more excellent than those in Thessalonica because they were, you know, would you know listen intently to what everybody was saying, but then they would go back and check and see what it was that, you know, was accurate and then hold fast that which was good. And I can normally ask Christians and say, well, you know, what did the pastor say last Sunday? And they haven't a clue. So I know the majority of Christians are not Bereans. 
They don't bother checking. They don't bother researching. They don't bother, you know, even taking a little five-minute thumb check to do a Google search. <laughs> and they could do that, you know, nowadays. But the point is this. In an age of information, why are Christians stupid? In other words, why don't you know the difference between opinion and truth? Or opinion and fact? We need to teach and cause people to realize and train up our pastors as well as our elders, deacons, and people to recognize the statement that needs to be said when you're making an opinion as opposed to a biblical truth. Because too many Christians are misled by opinions. It's an opinion that you should support Israel. That's an opinion. That's not a fact. The Bible does not say support Israel, period. It says, those that bless thee will be blessed to Abraham and to his progeny, which, you know, you could include, you know, some of the Arab people with that one. Huh. Careful. Better reread that. Or to Jacob, which he promised to reinforce the promise, you know, to the children of Israel. But there's also a counterbalance to that, that, quite frankly, who are the children of Abraham? Jesus said, you don't know who your father is, but I know who my father is. Your, your father is Satan. Who was he saying that to? The children of Israel? Excuse me? Am I going to write off the entire nation? No. But I am going to write off the Israeli government right now because they don't know who their father is. Because they don't believe in God. They believe that the Bible is historical. So quite frankly, an opinion is out there about we support Israel right or wrong. That's an opinion. That's not a biblical truth. You pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You witness to the Jew and to the Gentile. You share the gospel to the Jew first and to the Gentile, according to what Jesus said. You pray for and cause the environment to be made in such a way that they would be blessed in some ways, the same way that you would bless Ethiopia or some other nation, that God wants you to treat all as your brothers. For God so loved the world. It isn't that he loved Israel more, it's he chose them for his own purpose, and it doesn't say what for. If you ask any Jew, they say, huh, yeah, we know what he chose us for. Now, could he please choose someone else? Such a deal. You know, choose, choose the Christians, please. We've had enough persecution. The point being is this. Opinion is to support Israel. The fact is pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The fact is how you treat them will be done unto you as a nation. Now, that doesn't mean that you support them when they you know, do the wrong thing. You don't support murderers. You don't support adulterers. You don't support people in sin. You support what God says to do in every circumstance and situation of your life. That's biblical truth. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is a biblical fact because it tells us what to do, what not to do, and then how to do it. We are told to trust in the Lord with all our heart. That's to, what we're told to do. We're told not to trust in our own understanding. We're told to, in all our ways, acknowledge Him, and we're told to, we're told we will be directed by God. In all our ways, He'll direct your path. So, God wants to direct us in all our ways. And so, if we are technically asking Him, He'll tell you how you can help, if you want to, and God tells you to, Israel, the people, as opposed to Israel, the nation. Because an apostate nation is an apostate nation, no matter how you look at it. And I'm sorry, but you know, when somebody tells me that they're going to support Israel, I always ask them, well, that's nice. Are you going to support the gospel? Do you support God? Do you support Jesus? Do you obey God? Do you obey what Jesus said? Do you do what God says to do? Do you believe in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Is the Bible a lie? Or do you believe that God is a liar? That he should you know, be like men and lie to you and tell you not to do what he's told you to do? Because after all, he did tell you to trust in him and not trust in your own understanding. So what are you doing trying to trust in your own understanding by trying to make up something where you automatically just do it anyways? Do you see the point? Opinion will mislead you. Biblical fact will teach you. Be careful. There's a lot of opinions out there constantly being bombarded on American people, on the internet, and on the world. Deceptions alive and well and living in America as well as in the internet and all over the world. And the spirit of Antichrist is about where it says, oh, I'm anointed. Sure I am. Yeah, right. Dream on. I don't trust anyone that says they're anointed. Matter of fact, the only thing I trust in is the Lord because I'm told not to trust anyone else. I'm told to examine all things, to prove all things to check out the sources that I'm told are sources. You see, there's another thing about opinion. I know a lot of professional blogs out there that, you know, like 
Good Earth or something or YourBetterHealth.com or some you know weird name that people will quote medical information from, and I'll go back and look at them and say, okay, where's the doctor that was involved in this? Well, there was no doctor. Oh, well then, why are you quoting it? Well, because it's from this medical site. Oh, okay, well let me look at the medical site. The medical site says, this is a entertainment site for entertainment value only and should not be misconstrued with professional opinion, but you should check with your doctor first and a nurse. And I wonder, why are you misleading people by quoting a source you think is an authority when they're not? They're not an authority. They're trying to mislead you to accept the clicks, the little penny ante that they get for each time you click on their website or they get some kind of little point zero zero one click for each time that you visit their site. It's not just a popularity game. They're making money off you and you're being fleeced. No offense. But that's the point about opinion. Again, you need to prove what is true and we need to be accurate about what we say. If I have an opinion, I tell people straight up, look, this is an opinion. Otherwise, I say true or false, because that's the way it is with God, yes or no. God doesn't mess around. He doesn't say, this is my opinion about you. No, he says, this is what I say unto you. And Jesus said, I say unto you. That sounds like authority. We don't have it. We only have what we think we know. And if you really think you know something, the Bible says if any man thinks he knows anything, he knows nothing at all. So we really don't know as much as we think we do, and we know even less than what we really think we know, because if we even think whether we do know it, we're told that we don't know it. Because God could make it applicable in a different way according to his spirit, because he chooses to use it as he chooses, the way he discerns for us to understand and comprehend according to his spirit and not our own. That's why we can't lean on our own understanding. That's why... When you use that scripture about the Holy Spirit, you know, has to interpret the scripture for you, it's true, but he has to interpret everything for you, really, because you don't lean in your own understanding, according to Proverbs 3, 5, 6. You have to quit opining and start resigning your will to God so that his will will be done and not yours. If you resign your will to God, as opposed to proffer your opine, your opinion, then God will lead you and direct you according to His will and you'll accomplish much joy and less deception. But, don't be confused with when something goes wrong in your opinion and you get confronted by someone like me that says false. Guess what? Most of what I'm confronting on the internet or I'm confronting in dealing with people is false not because the person is. No. The person doesn't know any better. I know that. It's false because they're following opinions and not the Word of God.